Introduction of Anna Academy. Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Ravnish Guel, a senior consultant dermatologist and aesthetic laser surgeon. I am having post MD clinical experience of around 15 years. I am an educator and orator in dermatology, sexually transmitted diseases in, in lasers and aesthetic procedures. I have more than 25 publications in my name. I have vast clinical experience. Also, I am a fitness freak and marathon runner. I do have a telegram group for the benefit of the learners wherein they can ask their doubts, they can ask me questions if there are any. The name of the group is Dermatology by Dr. Avnish and the link to that group is Dermatology underscore for underscore need PG. So let us crack need PG with India's largest learning platform that is an academy wherein you will get daily live classes, live tests and quizzes. You will have the structured course and unlimited access to the live and recorded sessions. So speaking about the subscription rates, so one month subscription is around 4,500 rupees inclusive of 10% of discount and 12 month subscription will cost you around 22,500 rupees again inclusive of 10% discount. And to avail that 10% discount, you can use this code Dr. Avnish hyphen YT. So let us start with five MCQs in 15 minutes. So these are the recall previous year questions of various examinations. And this is your first question. So pseudo isomorphic phenomena, it is a feature of plain warts. So in discussion, we will discuss the Cobner's phenomena, which is also called as isomorphic phenomena. It is the development of similar lesions after trauma. So it is classically seen in psoriasis, lacrimal planus and vitiligo. So these three conditions, they show the classical cobnerization. So other conditions which may be associated with Cobner's phenomena, they can be the lichen nitidus, Kaposi sarcoma, Pteriasis rubra pilaris, Darius disease, discoid lupus erythematosus, erythema multiforme, the various eczemas and pemphigus vulgaris. Coming to the pseudocobners phenomena, which is due to the process of auto inoculation. So it is the inherited property of the disease itself to spread by the process of auto inoculation at the site of trauma. So it is seen in warts. So warts are mainly caused by human papilloma virus and molluscum contagiosum, which are secondary to mollusky pox virus. So the Cobner's phenomena is also known as the isomorphic phenomena. It is characterized by the appearance of similar sort of lesions at the site of trauma. It appears usually within 7 to 14 days after trauma. It may show the all or none phenomena and it could be an indicator of the activity of the disease. Coming to the reverse Cobner's phenomena. So reverse Cobner's phenomena, it is the disappearance of the lesions after trauma. So this is the third type, the disappearance of lesion after trauma called as the reverse Cobner's phenomena. It is seen in psoriasis and granuloma annulare. 
so there is a classification for commoners phenomena it is called as boyds and nelder classification in which the diseases they are categorized into the four categories category 1 2 3 and 4 so category 1 it is reserved for the condition which show the true commonization so they are psoriasis lichen planus and vitiligo so these three conditions they show true commonization the category 2 is for those condition which show the pseudo commonization so which have the warts which have the molluscum contagiosum and the pyoderma gangrenosum the category 3 it is reserved for the condition which may occasionally show the commonization so we have derrier's disease erythema multiforme bessett syndrome kaposi sarcoma and lichen sclerosus in that group and finally the category 4 is for those conditions which have questionable or poor correlation with the commonization so we have pemphigus vulgaris eczemas and dermatitis and lichen nitidus in that group coming to question number 2 so the keratoderma blenorrhagica it is found in reiter syndrome so keratoderma blenorrhagica it is a feature of reiter disease or reiter syndrome also called as reactive arthritis so the reiter disease it it is characterized by a triad and the components are conjunctivitis urethritis and arthritis so in the absence of all these components of this triad of reiter's disease the presence of keratoderma blenorrhagica alone is diagnostic of reiter's disease so reiter's disease it shows association with hla b27 the clinical features of reiter's disease it is the conjunctivitis which is usually bilateral it is the urethritis which is non gonococcal urethritis it is the balanitis i stands for aritis k stands for the keratoderma blenorrhagica which is characterized by the hyperkeratotic lesions on the palms and soles and finally arthritis so this cubica it can be taken as a mnemonic to remember the features of reiter's disease so arthritis usually it affects the large joint and it affects less than five joints and also the arthritis arthritis is asymmetrical so this is the bilateral conjunctivitis of reiter syndrome or reiter's disease this is the urethritis which is the non gonococcal urethritis caused by chlamydia and this is the arthritis in reiter's disease again it is asymmetrical arthritis which involves the large joints and it is the less than 5 joints are involved in reiter's disease coming to the cutaneous manifestations the cutaneous manifestations can be keratoderma blenorrhagica the lesions here can be vesico pustular or vexi lesions initially later they may turn hyperkeratotic and crusted so there can be the similar sort of lesions over the scalp or buttocks the second type of cutaneous manifestation characteristic of reiter's disease is cercinate balanitis which is characterized by serpiginous ring shaped dermatitis on circumcised glans penis so this is the keratoderma blenorrhagica the vesico pustular vexi lesions initially finally they may be crusted and hyperkeratotic and in absence of any other feature the presence of keratoderma blenorrhagica alone is diagnostic of reiter's syndrome then second is cercinate balanitis which is characterized by the serpiginous ring shaped lesions on the glans penis then the reiter's syndrome should be differentiated from reiter's disease so reiter's is the reiter's disease is synonymous to the staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome which is due to toxins secreted by staphylococcus aureus it acts against desmoglein 1 producing blistering in the subcorneal layer so you get the blistering in the stratum granulosum in the staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome 
so the condition it is characterized by the tenderness of the skin it is characterized by the frank exfoliation of the skin and exfoliation is characteristically called as the potato chip exfoliation in staphylococcal scarlet it skin syndrome the disease can affect the children's and adults but the mortality rate in children is quite low it may vary from 2% to 3% while in adults it may vary up to 60% and also you may see nikolsky sign as positive in the rittles disease also called as staphylococcal scarlet skin syndrome coming to question number 3 so false about molluscum contagiosum is the choice d which says caused by flavivirus no it is caused by pox virus otherwise the condition is more severe in atopic dermatitis yes it can be treated with cantridine yes it can be transmitted by skin to skin contact and fomite exposure yes so the choice d which says it is caused by flex flavivirus is wrong so molluscum contagiosum it is caused by molluscum pox virus actually there are four types 1 2 3 4 type 1 is most common cause while that type 2 type of molluscum pox it is most common in hiv patients incubation period of molluscum contagiosum may vary from 2 weeks to 6 months the infection is transmitted to through direct skin to skin contact or through fomites the infection of molluscum contagiosum it is characteristically limited to epidermis it never goes beyond epidermis and clinically the lesions of molluscum contagiosum they are pearly white dome shaped papules with central indentation so you get pearly white dome shaped papules and they will have central indentation or depression in the center histologically it is characterized by intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies which is called as henderson patterson bodies or lipschitz body molluscum contagiosum can occur at any site it could be the limbs trunk or intrauterine area but if the lesions are seen in anogenital lesion then the chances are there that it has been acquired sexually the molluscum contagiosum it shows the pseudo commoners phenomena multiple smaller lesions of molluscum contagiosum they may coalesce they may join together to form plaque and this condition is called as agmenate molluscum contagiosum so multiple smaller lesions they join together to form a larger lesion and it is called as agmenate molluscum contagiosum sometimes the lesion shows eczematous dermatitis around them that is called as molluscum dermatitis or meersons phenomena and this phenomena is quite characteristically seen in children with atopic dermatitis while in immunocompromised individuals the lesions of molluscum molluscum contagiosum can be extensive they can be widespread they can be giant and refractory to the treatment so they may attain size which may vary from 10 mm to 3 cm in size so that this image is the presence of meersons phenomena around the lesions of molluscum contagiosum that finally leads to the disappearance of the lesion in molluscum contagiosum this image is for the giant molluscum contagiosum so the lesions are giant they are extensive they are also refractory to the treatment so it is seen in immunocompromised individuals as giant lesions so this image is of agmenate molluscum contagiosum so multiple smaller lesions they may coalesce to form plaque and this is called as agmenate molluscum contagiosum the genital molluscum contagiosum when the infection is acquired through sexual transfer sexual contact few more images of giant molluscum contagiosum and this is a classical lesion of molluscum contagiosum a pearly white dome shaped papule with central indentation in histopathology of molluscum contagiosum the infection is localized to the epidermis and you can see intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies called as molluscum bodies henderson patterson bodies or lipschitz body for the treatment of molluscum contagiosum it could be with various topicals like trichloroacetic acid salicylic acid with phenol 
cantharidine can be used especially in children which is a blistering agent and imiquimod so these are topical agents that causes the damage or cauterization of the lesions we can treat them with intralesional immunotherapy with interferon therapy cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen and can also be removed surgically with curettage procedure so surgical curettage can be done however for the treatment in immunocompromised individuals they are treated with cedofovir 1% to 3% ointment or systemic paclitaxel coming to question number 4 so max joseph spaces are histological feature of lichen planus so let us discuss the histology of lichen planus so in lichen planus you will see hyperkeratosis in a skin biopsy sample when examined under microscope so hyperkeratosis that is the thickness of the stratum corneum will be there however no parakeratosis so parakeratosis actually is the presence of nucleated cells in stratum corneum so the parakeratosis is a feature of psoriasis it is a feature of various chronic eczemas so parakeratosis is not a feature of lichen planus you will see irregular acanthosis that is increase in the stratum spinosum you will see focal hypergranulosis increased in the thickness of stratum granulosum and that will be seen in a short tooth pattern now in lichen planus there is basal cell degeneration so there will be suppose this is epidermis this is dermis there will be the damage to this basal layer so the due to this damage when epidermal cells when they fall into the dermis they are called as colloid bodies and the melanocytes when they fall into the dermis and they being engulfed by macrophages they are called as melanophages and the process is called as pigmentary incontinence so otherwise you will see band like infiltrate at the dermoepidermal junction and pigmentary incontinence characteristically you will see the colloid bodies civet bodies cytoid bodies which represents the degenerated keratinocytes and max joseph spaces so max joseph spaces is the area of separation between epidermis and dermis seen in lichen planus so let us have a look at the various histological slides so you get the civet bodies which are dead keratinocytes so they are the keratinocytes which have fallen into the dermis in lichen planus you will see wedge shaped hypergranulosis or saw tooth pattern of hypergranulosis you will see orthokeratosis or the there will be no nucleated cells in the stratum corneum dermoepidermal junction being obscured by lymphocytes due to the presence of infiltrate and vacuoles in the basal layer which represents the damage to the basal layer and also the band like infiltrate in the or the upper dermis or below the epidermis so to clear it further you will see the hypergranulosis presence of civet bodies lymphocytic infiltrate at the dermoepidermal junction the clefts at dermoepidermal junction and this is called as max joseph spaces you will see the pigmentary incontinence and colloid bodies due to the damage to the basal layer and finally this slide is to show you the band like infiltrate the presence of band like infiltrate at that dermoepidermal junction and the the presence of <coughs> civet bodies and clefting at that dermoepidermal junction in lichen planus coming to question number 5 so eye lash involvement in pediculosis it is caused by pediculosis pubis so pediculosis pubis it is not only restricted to the pubic area as uh, denoted by the term but the infection or the infestation that can go up to the axilla and it can affect the eye lashes so this is the 
eyelash involvement in pediculosis pubis. You can see the lice over the eyelashes and this is the pubic lice, the thyrosis pubis or the pubic lice. So the pediculosis pubis is caused by crab louse or thyrosis pubis. The infection is commonly seen in, in the pubic or anal hair but rarely it can involve the eyelashes and even the axillary hairs. So the disease is characterized, the infestation is characterized by the nets which are attached to hair and they are nourished by the secretion of the apocrine glands. The condition is seen in all classes of the society, it being sexually transmitted and less commonly through fomites. So the condition is associated with severe itching and excoriation. The louse, it appears as yellow brown specks. And the disease, it, the infestation, it is characterized by macular cerulae. So macular cerulae are blue black color pigmented macules. They are seen on the side of the trunk and inner aspect of thighs. So the macular cerulae, they are blue black color pigmented lesions on the side of trunk and inner aspect of thighs. So I will be showing the few clinical photographs. So the first image is of the pubic louse. When examined under uh, the microscope or the magnification lens and this is how they look like with the naked eyes. So this is how they look like. So this is the yellow brown specks over the anal area or it could be the, in the pubic region. These are the macular cerulae. So these are the blue black color pigment. They are produced by the salivary secretion of the louse which which breaks down the hemoglobin and this is due to the components of the hemoglobin. This is few more images of the macular cerulae. Then this slide is to show you the infestation in the axillary area and in the eyelashes. So the pubic louse is not only restricted to the pubic area, the infestation can be there in the axillary area and over eyelashes. With this, I urge you to attend free live classes. I also urge you to join an academy and attend the plus courses and batch courses. You can use my referral code Dr. Avnish-YT to get additional 10% of the discount on normal subscription charges. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel of Unacademy that is the Unacademy Live Need PG and on Telegram the Unacademy Need PG Live wherein all the educators are there to help you to clear your doubts. On YouTube for NEET PG 2021, the UN Academy, they are starting the rituals at 5.30 p.m. You will have five MCQs in 15 minutes just like this, which we have done. At 6 p.m. you will have five images in 15 minutes. At 6.30 p.m. you will have a case study. At 7 p.m. you will have a pre-intern series by Dr. Sanket. At 8 p.m. you will have integrated sessions of various specialities. That is mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. At 9 p.m. you will have a subject voice quiz. At 9.45, you will have a discussion on syndromes and at 10 p.m. you will have central exam flashcard series. So the Unacademy has also started a foundation batch course that is for NEET PG 2021. The course has been started on, started on 18th June and it will last till November. And in this course, all the top 19 educators will take you through uh, to their various uh, subjects and that will help you to build a strong foundation and help you to clear NEET PG 2021. Finally, I urge you to like, to share, to comment and to subscribe to this YouTube channel and you can also press the bell icon for to get the future notification. And finally, thank you very much for patient listening. Thank you.